In this episode of MGuy, we're going to be looking at everything that's wrong with my SL55. So for those of you that are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. This is my brand new, well new to me, SL55 AMG, which I picked up just last week. Um, I have got a back catalogue of about 130 odd videos featuring a Maserati Gran Turismo, an Audi R8, a Mercedes-Benz CL65 with a V12 and this beautiful SL55. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber. So in this video, we're going to go through everything that's wrong with this car, but also everything that's right with it. Because what I have here is a file of invoices uh, from a previous owner with all the work that he's done on the car. So we'll go through these. I can describe a few of the things that were, were done. And also I'll go into the things that are still uh, faulty with the car and which I need to get done pretty soon. This car has a very interesting service history in the sense that most of the miles were done in the first kind of 10 years of its life. And from about 2012 to present, uh, it's done virtually nothing. I'll show you the service book right now. So you can see it's got a pretty good service history, but the majority of the miles were done in the first 10 years. By 2012, it had done 74,000 kilometers, but since then it's only done about 15,000 kilometers. So let's go through some of the invoices. Uh, there was a new battery put in in 2015. This car has two batteries. It has a starter battery and it also has an accessories battery, one in the front, one in the back. So a lot of problems with the car can be attributed to low battery voltage. So if you, if you do have problems with, with electrical um, items in the car, that will be the first place to look. In 2014, there was a transmission service and it also had a replacement secondary air pump and that was 980 Australian dollars. Expensive. So this is my favorite invoice because in late 2015, they replaced the ABC suspension pump. Now this car, the SL, like the CL, had the ABC, the active body control suspension, which is a very, very clever system where various sensors uh, report the, uh, the pitch and roll of the car to a computer, which then pumps hydraulic fluid into four struts at each wheel. This provides for amazing ride quality, but if anything goes wrong, it can be horrendously expensive. One of the things that does tend to go wrong is that people forget to top up the, the ABC fluid. And when that happens, the suspension pump can shred little bits of metal into the entire system, which then requires everything to be replaced. It's a catastrophic failure. Anyway, so in 2015, again, the um, suspension pump was replaced at a cost of $2,600. So that's preventative maintenance. Um, so, so hopefully that will, will not fail again in the near future. In 2016, some uh, drive belts and idler pulleys were replaced and some work was carried out on the um, supercharger clutch. Uh, looks like they were deglazing it. Um, there is an electro, electronically controlled clutch on the supercharger, so it doesn't actually work all the time. So that is brought in uh, when you know, there's a high demand for torque. Um, so I'm assuming that that clutch can get glazed and that's been repaired. And there looks like there's been a bit of welding on the exhaust done in 2017. Didn't see anything particularly underneath, but, um, but yeah, the exhaust sounds fine. So, so all good stuff. And then just before I bought it, um, it undertook a service at Mercedes-Benz in Sydney. Quite a few useful things were done then. Wiper blades were replaced, always good to do. Spark plugs, um, this engine is a twin spark engine, so that's 16 spark plugs and uh, you don't get much change out of 332 bucks for those, plus labor. Um, one thing they did do, which was really dumb, was they replaced the rear brake pads, but they didn't replace the rear rotors. Now with most European cars, you replace the pads and rotors at the same times. They have soft compound in those rotors uh, for, I think it's because of the weather conditions in, in Europe, the colder conditions, they want the 
uh, the ability for the, the pads to, to bite properly in cold weather. So should always do both at the same time. It was dumb not to do them. Um, and a starter battery. So hopefully we've covered both batteries. So that's quite a good file of, of documentary um, evidence of work done over the past six years. Um, before I picked the car up, I had a few bits of work done as well. I had the rotors done, the pads uh, were new enough that we could just sneak those rotors in and get them done at the same time, which was great. Also, the engine mounts needed replacing the left-hand passenger side one had disintegrated, um, so they re replaced both of the engine mounts. And there was also an ABC hose that was leaking in the passenger side front wheel well, so that was replaced as well. Basically, that's everything that's right with the car, which is, which is pretty good, I think, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, things that do need to be done now, uh, the heater does not work. So that normally is a valve which is under the driver's side at the front there, which uh, either fails or sticks, um, so that will need to be replaced. Fortunately, we're coming into summer here in Australia, so there won't be a huge need for the heater. Um, but I'm going to get that done. The other thing that is a bit of a nuisance rather than anything else is that there is a petrol smell coming into the cabin of the car. It's not outside on the petrol cap. It's actually around the back here near the, um, near the rollover protection. I can smell fumes coming up from there. And when the car is sitting with the, with the windows closed, that smell does build up. So I'm going to get that done just for um, just for cosmetic reasons, really, just, just for it to be a little bit less unpleasant when you get into it. Um, it's certainly not enough to cause any, any danger, but, uh, but just, yeah, get it done. So that's everything that's wrong and everything that's right with my car. Um, I'm really happy with it. The way it drives is fantastic. It's a, it's a beautiful car. Got a lot of compliments already from random strangers, which is nice. I think the, the red interior is just such an unusual feature, especially in Australia. Don't see them at all. So very, very happy with it. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of the car. Uh, I hope you love it as much as I do. Um, what do you think? Let me know. I'd love to hear your comments. I'll read them all and uh, I try to reply to all of them as well. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber and um, turn on those notifications so you don't miss any more MGuy videos. You can follow me on Instagram at mguy.tv or Twitter at mguy underscore TV. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.